group stages. We're going to be taking a look at our second game today of Infamous facing off against IG Vitality. As some of you may have heard, there is a couple of results that we can talk about. Both Infamous and IGV are guaranteed through. They're going to be in the lower bracket. This match means nothing Spoiler else. Spoiler alert. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. Uh, we won't talk about the other games, but just know that that's the case. Uh, Infamous, they can't in change their settings at all and where they're placed. Uh, IGV can make a little bit of a better run into the later game. But I'm Lyrical, Merlini as well. You want to talk about it at all? What you think of these two teams? Where you see them sitting in the grander scape, uh, scope of TI? Infamous is a scary, scary uh, best of one team. They are guaranteed lower bracket. Uh, IG Vitality, I don't know about this team. Like they they look pretty good in like spring, late winter, and then they fell off a lot, and now they're like kind of back. But I don't know, something's up with their cores. I think when Paparazzi won that one v one tournament at DAC, I actually think it hurt their team a lot because then he started playing mid a lot more because mm. he's like. Uh, I don't know what happened, if there was like, some talks like, oh, this guy's the best mid or something like that, but just because you win a 1v1 tournament does not mean you're the best mid in the world. Completely different things. And he played mid, I, I think, for like a, a couple months, and then it sucked so badly for them that they had to switch back. Right. Uh, so after that, they like kind of felt lost. I don't know if there was like some beef in their teams, like, oh, well, Sakata's our mid player, but he's not better than our one player or something like that. I don't know. It just didn't seem like they were quite the same after that. And then Infamous, Infamous is, well, okay, now they first face Sven, which is good. This is how you actually counterpick a PL. Uh, but yeah, Infamous, I think, have very skilled core players. I think their three core players are amazing. Uh, not sure if I would put each of them better than their counterparts. I see Paparazzi's maybe slightly better than Ben Jazz, but overall they're way better than the three cores on IG Vitality. But their support duo is a little bit lacking. But I don't know. Cores, I guess, are kind of what matters later into the game. And I think Infamous would be far more explosive in a BO1 and have a lot more upside and also have a lot more like weird strats. Like I'm pretty sure they could pu pull out a Huskar easily if they needed to in a best of one. Whereas IG Vitality, yeah, they pulled out an Alk. It's not that strange. It wasn't even that good. Yeah, and a little bit of like the history on these two teams too. Like IGV was an organization that came together right after the Shanghai Major, and this is the same core group of guys that's been there that entire time. So like well over a year they've been playing together that amount of time, and in that time relationships can fray, sometimes be built back up again. It feels like they are finding their comfort zone a little bit more and proving that they are one of the top teams in the world. Um, and then Infamous, uh, they've kind of been a, a hodgepodge of collection of very strong South American players. Excel people might remember from that unknown team that performed well at the Frankfurt Major. Uh, the only member of that team that's still on this squad here, which is a different team entirely. Um, and then Tomato, I believe, played for uh, Team Freedom for a little while in North America and then made the switch back over. Ben Jazz has been around forever. So it's kind of like a team of consistency staying together versus a team that's been pulled together of like superstars of SA and now showing their stuff on the big stage. So IG Vitality need, need this game. Uh, they need this win. Whereas Infamous don't really need their, need this game. Four or five wins, so which is currently where Infamous is standing, is exactly the same standings wise. So they are, yeah, they're, they can just pick whatever and play whatever and it doesn't actually affect them at all. Whereas IGV, I think they are on the, actually this game also doesn't, particularly matter for them. I guess they can get a higher seed than Team Secret, but they are lower bracket nonetheless. Yeah. So it means minimal. For I, I'm not sure what the rules are. I know that upper bracket, you can choose your opponents. I don't know if that's the same in lower, but I, it's usually the same for lower bracket. Like fifth place can choose uh, either of the seventh or eighth place in the opposite group. Winter Wyvern. Who is this hero? Why is he picked for Sven? Interesting. They the South American teams are really good with the Winter Wyvern, from what I've observed. The Wombo, Sven, Darkseer, ES. <laughs> They're ready for it. They want to make it happen. They also have a ton of AoE now to deal with the PL. Last game was Alk and Quop. Yeah, like Ancient Apparition, Kunkka. Like those things. But, yeah, they don't clear. They, they don't like just instantly kill a ton of illusions very quickly. 
Um, I do really like the Winter Wyvern a lot. I feel like this is a hero that's, uh, in the right situations, the strongest pick in the game. It's just so good against some lineups, against PA, um, and even sometimes against Sven if you can get it to work just right. Uh, not to mention, you know, wave, wave pushing with Splinter Blast. Um, Arctic Burn scales incredibly well into the late game. What's the downside of this hero? Why haven't we seen it all that often, and can IGV exploit it? He's pretty garbage in three-on-three three lanes. He's also not particularly good at zoning out heroes. Is a uh, is what's his flying ability called? Arctic Burn. Arctic Burn is he that spell is such a long cooldown that it's really hard to zone people out with it. It does a lot of damage, but at the cost of being useless for 50 seconds. Uh, and obviously, Cold Embrace is really good against Sven, but if you've got all this other magical damage that you can maybe pile on top of it, it's not really looking that great. I wonder if they're going to switch it up and maybe even run like an Invoker or something with the rest of this IGV. This looks like the quintessential team fight lineup that IGV like, and then they like use a Paparazzi Invoker. I don't know. Might be too slow. Bad matchup versus PL in lane, but I guess they already have the Sven. Uh, I think the... Puck's already been out. Puck been out. Looks like a Ben Jazz hero to me. They could take it mid again and run Tomato on it. Could aggro too. It's probably looking like a better aggro. Mm, actually, they can pressure to send really hard with Razor. Razor plus any of their heroes. So I, I do like that pickup. See if that's what they go for. Jakiro! Okay! ITV pulling out of the bag of tricks. More AoE. They've gone the complete opposite of last game. They went like all <laughs> AoE, which is great. Which yeah. is great. <laughs> like, we are going to screw you over in particular, PL. You are not going to be able to do things this game. It's probably BKB PL game. Now, here's the real question. Is it going to be Jakiro mid? Don't think so. No. Okay. Support. Pretty good try lane. I think he's also decent at, like harassing a Razor. Razor's one of those laners that you're like, Ugh, I don't want to be up against that hero. No targeted ability, so you're not going to get purged by Unstable Current at all in the game unless you buy Yules. Ah. And a lot of magic damage too, which he struggles versus. And it slows him down a lot. Razor's the hero that needs to move around the fight. When you double moves, you slow him. He's in some bad shape. Well, ban out the Storm Spirit now. Don't want to have to run into any of those issues. IGV will not have the last pick. That will go to Infamous. And as far as things to pull the draft together, they've got tremendous team fight. For other teams, both for for other teams that are watching this, they should definitely note that none of these teams like Night Stalker at all. Night Stalker is super low priority. Was banned second phase last game. Wasn't picked at all in this, and I don't think he'll be banned. IGV. So that's something that's very interesting considering it's the most banned hero of this TI. Clockwork Razor, very common dual lane. Also just makes Sven's life hell. Good pickup, although it would have been difficult to lane it. Uh, I guess they could just run off. They, I think they like the off lane shaker more. Yeah, that seems oh, to be King okay. hero. What's the mid hero? I like also how they have King Gekka and he just picks his hero first as the captain. <laughs> it is shaker. Yeah, fair. All right, last pick coming out. They go for the Lina. TA obviously available as well, but might be scary with all the DOT anyways. King of AOE. Pipes, BKBs, pretty good this game. I wonder, do you just take like a Tide or something and make sure you have a Pipe Carrier for Infamous? I mean, Blade Mail's pretty good too. Result its magic. Yeah, well, I think Earthshaker's gonna be their off lane. Tide's not bad. But he still gets owned by a vacuum, right? It just does feel like they need. Uh, I guess Razor could build it, but then you're lacking a lot of damage too. Silence is okay. Oh wait, Silence is first phase. <laughs> Duh. Well, they are going to go for a pipe carrier, but it's going to be the Necrophos. So it does Ooh. look like it's going to be King Tekka switching it up. They run him in the safe lane solo, I guess, probably. Likely, yeah. I like IG Vitality's lineup a lot better than Infamous. This game. <laughs> okay. Much, much better. Also, Necrophos, you take more magic damage during Growth Shroud. That thing is not going to save you. 
I guess you're invulnerable with Cold Embrace Ghost Shroud. Is that a thing? Do people do that? I, I, I suppose. Yeah. But you, can, you also can't do it. Your heart stopping people. Sick call. Oh, no, you'll still be taking magic damage from Cold Embrace, too. Oh, wait. That's not how it works. Why, <laughs> why did I just say that? For some reason, I thought one was physical immunity and one was magical immunity. But, mm -hmm. yeah, you're actually just mitigating a lot of physical, which doesn't... I don't know. Go Shroud. Go Shroud, not very useful here. But he is a good matchup for in July. And yeah. it is a BKB disable paparazzi maybe they can burst him down just like echo and then reaper him and then kill him it's pretty good in team fights well i'm excited to see how this all turns out infamous versus igv igv would love to increase their standing within that lower bracket likewise infamous just looking to hold on to pride i don't think that they're going to be sandbagging at all in this one you know they, they want to put up a good showing no matter what i don't ever think you want to sandbag i think once it I think when you're a professional player, you just play every single game to win the absolute best that you can. I think the only exception being it being close to TI and you have some cool stuff that you don't want to show. That's right. the only exception I think for anything uh, in that. Because I think it just like creeps in your mentality. It's like, you know, it's like drinking alcohol or something. It's like, oh no, I'm never, ever, ever, ever going to drink. That's so much easier than like, you know, you drink once and it's like, oh, you know, I had one drink last time, I'll have it again. Or like people that quit smoking. And then they have a cigarette, and then they have it once, and it's so much easier to lapse after you've done it once. So right. I am of the mentality that you just try every game your heart is. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's sort of the... Uh, back when I used to like, play things competitively, it was always, you know, practice like you play. If you're in a, a mode of mentality of not trying hard, then you're going to, you know, repeat that. It's sort of learned memory things. So I'm with you, Ben. That sounds great. Say no to throw. Say no to throw. I like that as well. That's real good. It's better than dare. Were you ever in dare? I was in dare, yeah. That thing's useless. <laughs> <laughs> drugs are bad, but I don't know. You can't just say drugs are bad. They don't, like, they don't like, really give reasons why. If they said it like ruins families and friendship, people would probably understand a lot more and devastate, can devastate your finances. <laughs> Speaking of devastating finances, it might just happen here. Queen Tekka in some trouble, getting ran down. Let's get that bounty rune, but... Oh, he almost denied it. That would have been the play. Didn't quite happen, though. Joke's on you, Infamous. They are aggroing you. <laughs> because they have way stronger lanes this time, because they don't have an elk. Well played, IG Vitality. Well played. I think I'm just going to look at Excel this whole match and see him do the little smoke ring things. It's one of the cooler taunts. And the courier is going to go down. Matthew, how do you get a courier snipe on an Earthshaker? You smoke, and you stand right on top of the chicken. That's nice. Well, a good way to start it, and now they've caught Sakata. He's on the wrong side in no man's land, and that is going to be second blood now. Tomato picks it up. Easy. For those of you that don't know what dare is, it's a something called drug abuse resistance education that they teach in elementary school in, in the US. And this is what happened when I was a little kid, so like 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. And they just pretty much just tell you drugs are bad. They have a cop come in and they just give a speech about how bad drugs are. I, I mean, you're a little kid, so you're impressionable, so I guess it works in that aspect, but later on in your life, you're like, why are drugs bad? Yeah. Like, what exactly is a drug? Like, do they consider weed a drug now? I guess. <laughs> is alcohol a drug? Well, most people quantify it as not. I don't know. Caffeine? I've been drinking Caffeine? Red Bull Caffeine nonstop. Is a drug. Dota's a drug. Dota is a drug. They keep us Dare, you have failed. The antidote to or the cause of loneliness. In July, game ran down. Oh, God. They're taking him, but they can't quite find that kill. Matthew's been playing a good Earthshaker so far, man. Maybe he was just uncomfortable in the... On the uh, first spirit, because it was not crisp. Yeah, shaker, shakers, shakers, good. There's a lot less to shaker than earth spirit. Earth spirit's hard. That hero is impossibly difficult for normal plebs to pick up, like myself. I love the hero. I mean, I'm terrible at it. You can just sort of spam your keyboard a bunch, and it doesn't always end up working out. But occasionally, something cool happens. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with shaker. I think you can like roll, kick, 
and you know, like you can do all three spells with the same stone or something when you're low mm -hmm. on stones. I don't know. It's like I see some weird stuff in the good way. Well, we're still seeing the pressure that's come out, and Queen Tekka gonna get ran at yet again in this bottom lane. They do have the stun that's going to land. Dog fights. Very accomplished on this hero, and with the double iron shells, they make the kill happen. The Necroforce pick to me was very similar to the Alphys pick to me. It's like, I'm not sure if it's gonna work out, but I believe that the teams think it's really good here. I, I like that hero a lot for Ghost Route, or if you're ever super good hero for Reaper. Reaper and uh, Heart Chopper are very useful. That does not that much damage. Now that wasn't enough to bring him down. The Super versus Super Ben Jazz matchup. Uh, and also, Queen Tekka going to have to make the long walk out, but he's going to run into Injuli, and he's just going to get the punch, the little punch punch. They slow him down yet again. Iron Shell now on the dogfight. They can't do anything. On top, I thought they were going to be going for some more kills, but it's not enough. And they're out of mana, and it's a couple of minutes to Total Shrine. I can see this up soon. Darkseer still picked up. Is Darkseer going to get nerfed after TI? I mean, he always gets nerfed. It feels like that hero is just... When he's good, he's so good. Um, he hasn't been picked up much. Well, in the meantime, it's another roll in from Dogfights. They almost able to kill that Excel on 36 HP. He is going to die there. Matthew also getting ran down by the Iron Shell. Dogfights just wanting to hold his hand and slowly whittle down this poor Earthshaker. With nowhere less to go. Wanted to get outside of range so the Lena wouldn't get experience. It looks like that also ended up working. So Darkseer's only been picked 16 times. It's not that much. I mean, he got hit pretty hard with those nerfs. Yep. But he'll find a way. I always like Winter Wyvern's animation when he's like crippled. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. Holding his wing. He's like not even flying anymore. He has like a cast on. <laughs> not even a dragon. It's like the elbows of his wings. Yeah. His set's supposed to make him look very grandiose and majestic Winter Weather. What was this dude of what name? Wasn't it Winter Wyvern? I don't know. There's always like a like a title in the name. Wow, the Wyvern. Is it, well, it's not Winter. <laughs> <laughs> Ar Arroth. 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 A-U-R-O-T-H. I've okay. never heard of him. Well, that is a huge stack. Oh my god. Yeah, that is uh, a whole heck of a lot of it. Down bottom, there was some more action going, and Dogfight's just barely going to be able to get away from him. But I, I wonder if it's worth it for at some point, like the Earthshaker to come up and try to echo that. Not if Sven can get his grubby sword on it. Yeah, with God Street. I really want to take it. Dang, I just saw Paparazzi. He needed the attack speed to try and last with a creep, and he it's, uh, he tread swapped to freaking Agi to try and get the last hit with the attack speed. Did he that's get it? That's some next level stuff. No, he didn't get it. Oh, okay. It's the idea that counts, dude. That's that's really next level. I mean, he doesn't have much else to do at this point, to be fair. But yeah, that is. Oh, roll in. Benjaz taking the damage. He's gonna end up dying. Excel now. I don't have enough to slow him down, so. Just gonna be able to get out, pick himself up some levels. Much needed. Oh, Matthew has an invis rune as well. This should be a pretty easy pick off here. The enchant totem to open, fissure to follow, right click to come in, and they get the light strike array. Is Sakata really gonna? No, he's blocked off. All right, well played. Do you agree with her line? Better to burn out than fade away. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, you either go out on top or. We're not gonna go there. Yeah, I, I, Please I, I go there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's a good line. It's a good line. What line are you talking about, sir? <laughs> I mean, I think that, you know, it's it's sort of, it's like the, the Dark Knight stuff. You either, you know, live long, you, you, you die a hero, you live long enough to become the villain. It's like in Dota, too, you know, you, you, you can go it. out on top or you, you end up living to see yourself become Alliance. 
completely accurate. <laughs> you told me this joke earlier. I just wanted to see it. I know. You you really baited me into that so hard. Matthew in the mid lane, though. They take him down. Sakata, a quick kill. Don't be shy, Gabe. Show your true self. My true self. Oh, the true self here. First TI, you come up here, you're trying to get me to yell at people. Oh my goodness. Have a personality, Gabe. Ben Merlini Wu. What a guy. One thing I actually do dislike is like people who are like way more fake. Oh, yeah. That, that just grinds my gears. Yeah. Gotta be true. Gotta be real. Yeah. Ain't no half stepping. It's okay to be a little bit shy because you don't want to offend people. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. When you completely change your persona, it's just like, are you, you? I don't know. Same with like dating profiles too. Why would you want to? Is that that cool being someone else? Or well, no, because be eventually it's gonna come out. Like I know that's that's the that's the whole point of like why I dislike it. It's like, are you really gonna like? Let's say you do find a girl that likes your quote unquote fake persona, and then what's gonna happen if you actually like marry this person, or you're with them like 50 years later? Are you gonna live a lie your entire life? Is that worth getting? Maybe some girl that you, maybe you could have gotten anyways. No, you should. You should definitely end up, you know, treating yourself like yourself. Expect that you you have something to offer the world. And listen to this guy. He's a married man. I am. I'm a married man. My God, this stack is enormous, and they keep on going with it. This is going to become like, how much gold is that? That's like, well over a thousand gold. On IGV, they want to make the move right now. Paparazzi moving in. They are going to see if they can take it down. I don't think that there's any net worth is 3142. Oh wait, Angel is gonna. Oh <laughs> my goodness, that's a lot. Oh, oh. Ben Jazz. <laughs> that was a level two <laughs> plasma field too. They had vision of it, but that was sick. Oh, Matthew did the applause afterwards as well. They're feeling good about that one. That sec actually died. Oh, I didn't actually see the ones that have muted. What are you talking about, dude? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh. Well, both teams very passive in their movement so far. It's around the 10 minute mark. Levels that are going to be coming out shortly for level six. Um, Razor's actually really under leveled right now. Benja hasn't had the best of time as far as his lane has gone. He's out of level. He's out of trial lane. Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, relative to all the other heroes that are on the map, like you look at the heroes or the level tab, it's like way low. Excel is getting dope. Dogfights doesn't care. He's gonna kill him off. A killing spree for dogfights at 10 minutes in. Our spirit with an ion shell. Very scary. And I think dogfights is one of the better our spirits. Well, Sakata, he's gonna show up bottom with Super. Oh, PL's going for the I think he's gonna get clobbered by all this AoE when he has zero HP items. Hey, you're not really a fan of the bots on, on the uh, PL. Uh, sometimes. Okay. But, I, I don't know, it's it's weird. PL's a weird hero in that there's so many people such, such a pot content. Like, some people love bots. Some people go bots on every single game. And I generally like bots, but like this game, are you really going to be able to split push through that? How are you going to win a team fight? That's that's the thing about Dota. Now. You generally have to win at least one big team fight to win the game. There are some rare exceptions, I would say, like anti mage. I think is a big exception where you can actually just split push to death. But pretty much the split push days are over. Alchemist got nerfed, Naga got nerfed, and the only hero that you can realistically do it with is anti mage. And PLs, I don't really view as a split push anymore. And how are you going to win a team fight if you just die in like one great cleave? God forbid it's written on Sven. Well, and he keeps on getting these ancient stacks off. You look at his net worth, he's really catching up and has another triple stack here to work with also yeah. on top of the Mask of Madness. He is huge. He got aggro tried too, with a razor in the lane. It's supposed to be pretty bad for him, but he doesn't have his ult, so he's probably going to have to chill out a little bit. Stack it again. Why not? Yep. They do have an observer ward. I'm actually seeing the stack happening right now. Did not get the stack. Not a huge fan of pulling it north. North is pretty tough. Bottom lane. They have found Kinteka and going to pull him back in yet again. So that is a quick kill. Again, dog fights. The one that picks it up. And in July, actually, going to get pummeled a couple times by his buddy, Mr. Dog fights. That is going to be enough to find that finish. 
Amato thinking about chasing. Super gets the ice path down and going to try and TP away. Makes it happen. The whole time through, Paparazzi farms the stack. He's happy with that. Well, three to eight. And I, I, I mean... You're talking a little bit about like split push versus uh, team fight lineups. Yep. One of the ways that we sometimes see it is like a Legion commander or a bat rider, and then you play like the pick off game and try and win it by having like tower hitters. But even that hasn't ended up working that well this TI, it feels like. Oh, Earth Shaker has blink. This could be good for them. It's way better. Well, the thing about it is you don't want to fight in the IG Vitality's lineup. Yeah. Pretty much ever. Their lineup's terrifying. And they do have a couple of those pickoff heroes. Like you talked about, the Earthshaker. Uh, looks like Quinteca is going to be going for an Atos as well. Um, and that combo together with Earthshaker, they can blow up anybody on the field, I think. Yep. GV, they're expecting this type of movement. But Infamous are actually mid, and they're going to be able to push this tower while Motto farms the bottom lane. Or they could go for Peel. But unlikely because he just be able to mid shrine. Use that, head mid with the rest of his team. Um, and just I let Tower fall for free? What? Yeah, I don't know. I guess they expected maybe some big idle timing. So is that what they're waiting for it's now? You want to get like the initiation timings that have come out from IGV and then they can fight because like the blink is up for Shaker and all that stuff? The thing is, they. They don't need any items. Like, you can vacuum into Earth Spirit Stun into Ice Path plus Light Strike Array plus Storm Bolt. So, all you really need is a good vacuum off. And it's not like you're, he's going to get Blink anytime soon because he's going for mech first. So, I think the big thing that they're waiting for is to spend so they can actually have two main sources of initiation. It's commonly touted that you want at least two sources of initiation. So, they, it's way harder to prepare for most commonly talked about when you see Magnus. Like, Magnus doesn't actually want to be the first hero in. Something else like a man king. Well, he does have that blink now. And Infamous, after taking the tier 1 tower in the mid lane, getting set up to move bottom. And this is a hard hero to kill off. King Tekka right now has 8 armor. He's got 1,400 HP. And a wand. On top of that, raindrops. Like, they can fight it, certainly, but it's a concerted effort that they're going to need. Super scouted, they drop the ward behind. They'll have vision of anybody that happens to walk in here. Sven on the other side of the map doesn't have a teleport scroll. That is a sneaky observer. Possible to like it's a weapon, looks like. Yeah. Matthew's also sitting there trying to wrap around from behind. Super is figuring out what the heck is going on here, but he's gonna Ooh, no, uh, what? Is he at they have vision? They, I mean they did see him go into the tree. He almost ran right into himself. Yeah. Uh, they know that he's here. Now he shows back up again. And there's the Echo Slam immediately onto the Lena. Able to catch, deal some more damage. They're almost all dead, but a big Magnetize comes out, able to reapply. That's going to be a couple punches sent the way of dog fights, and they are eventually going to kill him off. But now Super and Sakata aiming towards Excel, and Paparazzi has shown up as well. They want to try and take him down. Matthew with the Fissure. Now the Enchant Totem almost able to kill him off, but not quite. And with Benjaz coming in, that will be enough. The Bloodstone Heal actually able to bring Super back up to almost full HP. So that kept him alive at least. Paparazzi looking for another. They have angle. to get out. They, they, did they not know that he has Bloodstone? I don't think so. Oh god, they've caught King Tekka, and now they come out with the damage. That's going to be a dead Necro. Yeah, they didn't. I, I don't think they paid attention to the Lena respawn timer right there. That was a pretty early Bloodstone, but maybe they didn't see it from like the. I don't know. They, they might have not noticed on the. Well, 60 minutes, they don't take the tower, but they do a damn lot of damage to it. Looks like Infamous will be going for the deny, back on out. Um, so pretty back and forth, like fairly even exchange there, would you say? Yeah, I think the Echo could have hit two heroes. He was really close to getting both the Lina and the Jikiro, and that would have been a great start to the fight, but I think he got like Ice Path at the start because he didn't actually get the, get the Jikiro. He is not afraid. <laughs> He's not a scared person right now. 
That's the bonus of get Growth Shroud, at least, is you will get a lot of heals with your uh, 16 sick charges right now. Yep. That thing should be amazing. Ooh, and Blade Mail. too. like the Blade Mail pickup. Okay. Oh. Huh? Echo Slam back off cooldown in 30, but IGV, they're the ones who Oh, they're going to get their first. Fine, Matthew. That's a big catch, but he gets the Fissure off the Enchant Totem as well. He's actually able to walk away, and Paparazzi now in a little bit of an awkward spot. Can they find this? A good vacuum into the wall, but the turnaround, they kill off the Earthshaker at the very least. Ben Jazz does get dropped by Sakata. And now Queen Tekka trying to figure out where to go next. Can they actually do anything here? A good fissure. Matthew again making the plays. And Tomato trying to bring down Sakata. If they could kill him off here, more Bloodstone charges would drop and be away. Paparazzi also going to be in trouble. They end up finding the deny. But the dead Sven, and soon to be the dead super, everybody's fallen. Again, infamous. They're going to take theirs. Wow, what a great play by Matthew there. Not only did he cast Fissure, he stunned two of the heroes with Fissure. Yeah, so that just made the fight incredibly difficult for them. Did he even drop in the fight? I don't think he died. No, he didn't die. Yeah, he didn't die. He was able to constantly just throw stun after stun out. Made Sven's life very, very difficult. And Sven also had to really be scared of the uh, Necropose. As soon as he saw the Necropose, he's like, I don't really want to go into that. Even if he doesn't get Reapered, he can still get Atos and two Static Link. And there goes most of your damage. So. There's so many heroes that they need to kill at the start. However, like there's so much backup. In July, just ran into this. I don't know if he didn't know that Tomato had a Diffusal Blade or what, but... That was Tomato's like ready to crush. Kill. He comes in super late in the fights. It's really smart by Tomato. Like, you don't want to go in early. Like, you're not going to have any HP to do anything in the fights. So leave the tanking to a hero like Necropos and have Winter Wyvern sit behind these squishy heroes. Like, look at their position right now. King Tech out in front, attacking tower, a cell right behind him to quote Embrace, just in case something funky happens. Then if he gets Ghost Shroud, that's even more heal, right? Absolutely. Yeah, he'll be back up to full in very little time. Um, Wait, heal? does the Ghost Shroud only amplify your own heal? Uh, yes. yes. Because it's a self. Oh wait, no. But um, it would, it, cold embrace wouldn't get in. I know. I think it does amplify any healing. But his restorative powers are amplified. I don't know. I haven't seen too many heroes actually heal. Yeah. I, will double I believe it does. Um, so wait and see. So any, not a, any heal and mineration. He's gonna certainly need it right now, but. Not going to get it. They blow him up very rapidly. Sakata dropping the Laguna Blade on him. I don't know what happened down there bottom within July, but he just like sort of tried to surge away and then immediately got defused. Yeah. Defuse a great item for Starks here. Yeah. He will be able to make his escape there. Um, but... 20 minutes in, it is Infamous actually behind in terms of kills, but they're ahead in terms of net worth. Uh, Roche is usually around the time when you would start thinking about it, but uh, do you think they have heroes that can sneak a Roche? Infamous have awful Rocheon heroes. I think worse is Ember Spirit. The hero's garbage with that Roche. Razor's pretty awful too. And Phantom Lights are a bit better than both of them, but also still pretty terrible. So they definitely need to win a big team fight or go for like some lifesteal, I think. I, I, any team can do it if they win a fight, but in terms of doing it to start off a fight, very risky for an Infamous. A little bit less risky for IT Vitality. It's been pretty decent at doing it, but I don't think there's any reason for either team to go for a Roche right now. Okay. If they take a fight that happens to be around that area, then so be it. But Leonite does have a Shadow Blade, can easily get the guys on the side, like, especially on a hero like Necrophones, and it'll also allow him to kill the Queen's Wyvern. So there's a lot of heroes they, they need to kill in the team fight. Looks like super in an awkward spot. Sakata managed to get out at the right time just because he did complete his gold for BOTs. That's fortuitous timing. Maybe he had an inkling that something could be coming his way too, but he is going to get out of there, like you said. And more time for Paparazzi to farm. He fell a little bit behind after those couple of deaths. So really not what you want out of a Sven. But he's level 15, has the plus 8 to all stats. And now it looks like Infamous going to try and push the issue yet again up in the top lane. So they try and take a tier 2 tower.
tier two, tier two. That hits pretty hard as well. Almost up to complete it on PL. It's gonna be a lot of illusions. Even throwing it on like the wall jump will uh, cause a lot of damage. A lot of propagate for sure. Here they go. They can get the vacuum wall combo or vacuum earthquake combo. They did just get the blink dagger completed in the last couple of minutes by July as well. He's able to jump in the roll, the stun. My god, they're gone. But the Echo Slam turnaround, they actually did it at the same time that they went for the Winter's Curse. It still dealt the damage, but not really enough as far as being able to lock him down. And Matthew just going to drop here, most likely. A double for Paparazzi, but three dead for Infamous. Who's disrespecting Conehead Man right here, man? How are they just gonna get vacuumed? I guess they didn't have vision inside and they had no idea, but that's something that you have to fear for your life. Like, look at their lineup. Vacuum plus anything is yeah. gonna destroy you. And they had two big cores get eaten alive during the start of the fight. Necropose and Razor both got caught in that combo. If it's one of them, I think it's okay because they can just be cold of Razor or they can immediately win this first. But maybe they also got thrown off by the PKB that happened to come out on the spin at the exact same time. Decca. Now they kill off Super, but everybody else from IGV will get out of here, it looks like. Maybe they can run down Sven? Wow, Necrophos going for a Crimson? What? Excel? This, he manages to find a kill. Her spirit went down over in the jungle, and Razor is still chasing Paparazzi. He's got to be careful here as well. Are they really going to like try and go for another round of this, even through the Aegis? Their creep is in a pretty good spot, and they can probably hit it before uh, the va before Earth Spirit's up. So 20 seconds. Yeah, it's an okay window. It's not great, but the tower's already at half HP. It's just content to keep the pressure on, and they are going to run forward. They find themselves Alina. Sakata in trouble and going to be killed off here most likely he is not yet okay the surge away gonna be fine still paparazzi jumped in but the cold embrace is gonna keep him alive razor fine and dandy and now stealing the damage from paparazzi they force them back yet again so infamous holding strong here Ooh, very nice vision that was clutch in july was looking to blink in and vacuum so not a big deal great greaves coming out from the dark At the end of the day, they get... Oh, actually, uh, not yet. The turnaround Echo Slam, though, is quite big, and a uh, good stun is going to save the day, but Lina is going to drop as they have the Winter's Curse. That's only the Aegis for the moment. Matthew trying to create that separation. They find the kill on July after the fact. Paparazzi trying to chase down Matthew, but he hasn't been able to kill him off yet, and Queen Kika still staying strong here. Has 11 stick charges. They can't kill this guy off. They still haven't killed off Matthew either, and Paparazzi's just been kited around the fight. He hasn't been able to do anything at all, and now defused, now getting ran down. Sven dead yet again, and uh, somehow Matthew lived through all of that. This cold embrace in Winter Wyvern is only the, the Winter Wyvern is actually just destroying them so badly in the fights. Great Winter's Curse. I think he... Also kited the Sven. Oh my goodness, Queen Tekka. Very close to again. And has the heals. But more importantly, the tower down, and now Elena Barracks. And this was into the Aegis that they ended up going. They just feel very confident how strong they are right now. Well, Dogfights is going to get the stun as they head away. Now the call is to go back. So IT Vitality need to reconsider how they approach the team fight. So I think they went on the cores a lot, but these supports are supports that just cannot be left alone. Like the Cold Embrace just dumps their spend during his BKB. And then uh, the Earthshaker has had some pretty darn good echoes. And then, then of course the PL comes in super late in the fight. So I think if they kill the two supports, they can actually just win the fight. Similar to what they did at IG Vitality. They pushed high ground when the two supports are dead. And I don't think the two supports at IG Vitality are as important as the one they But Cold Embrace is just completely disruptive to what Sven wants to do in the fight. Yeah. 
And we've seen it happen where they just end up getting you know, kited around. And it, they're fairly mobile now as well. Um, just that extra little bit of movement speed to get. And Infamous looking to try and run down yet another lane. Up on the high ground, though, this might be the avenue for IGV to take the fight. Even just these three could, could potentially kill all of Infamous if they're in a really bad position. And the vacuum wall, the stun as well. It might just happen. The cold embrace. No, no, the winner's curse. It's going to keep him alive. The Razor is going to die. And also the Necro. But it looks like Tomato might be able to make an escape as he does have the blink as well as that doppelganger away. And Matthew saving with the Fissure. That was even with a great Winter's Curse coming out for Ocel. Good thing he has a Blink Dagger. He really needs it so he can find the Sven in all these fights. Sven might consider going for a Link in During BKB, it blocks two spells. Static Link, Reaper Sight. Oh, wait. And spells. Winter's Curse. And yeah. Winter's Curse. I mean, those are all great spells to block. I don't think you're going to get me to me, but the other two, that's great. And that's why Sakata's going for Link in Sphere. Maybe he's going to dump on a Paparazzi. Who knows? Right now, they actually don't have any way, or they're, they're not getting back to defend the tower. Um, Tomato's able to send and propagate some illusions and now deal some damage, which forces the rest of IGB back. Um, also worth noting, the BKB is starting to get a little bit low for Paparazzi. Seven seconds is that middling point. Things could start to get scary. Yeah, he needs a Bloodthorn at some point, too. I'm actually surprised he's going for Daedalus. I think the silence is really important versus Phantom Lancer, versus Shaker, versus Wyvern, versus Necrophos. Like, they have no way to get in the silence right now on any of them. Uh, but Daedalus is a lot more damage to primarily from trying to kill people during a big burst or trying to deal with the DL. Super Ben Jazz. What a guy. He's not that far. There's, th there's three supers now at TI as well. We both haven't talked about a ton. Oh, I'll always think of Super Benja. He went by Benja for a time. Yeah. I was looking up some of the stats before this, and he has like twice as many games on Jug as anybody else. It's like his most played hero by a huge margin. But I don't think he's played it in the TI yet. Jug is very fun. Yeah. I, I don't actually think I've seen him in any of the games that we've cast. Okay, this is a dangerous push. No PKB on Razor, but now he is going to... Queen Tekka and two Benjas are in range for a two-man vacuum. Dogfights was getting a little bit ran at. Maybe that's why they didn't feel like going for it. They were able to take away all this mana before. Get in and Sakata actually looking for an opening here. Tomato is in the area, but they yes. need to find the real one. Too much HP. So scary. The, the rest of Infamous is actually here as well. And Sakata, do they have any detection in time? They were not towards the north, but he actually went south. And Sakata will get out. Two dust to use. Value. The dust sound sounds like the chest opening sound. Huh. It's an association I haven't made before. Yeah, it does a little bit, though. I had that small feeling of satisfaction from <laughs> getting this. I was like, oh, what did that remind me of? <laughs> or maybe it was disappointment. Yeah, I know. Probably disappointment. I couldn't identify that. Never a lucky word. I thought for a second that was the centaur stomping uh, with the illusions being propagated by Tomato, and that would have like broken the TP. That's the next level play right there, and why you get Ags for the PL. That'd be sick. Now he's gonna have hearts soon. All this magic damage is gonna be pretty useless. Gonna be mostly. Okay, so magical damage becoming less and less effective. Uh, Winter Wyvern actually is gonna run into super here. And they will have Winter's Curse as well as everything else in the area if they want to use it. They try and go for the teleport. Do they drop Winter's Curse? Yes, they will. It's doing a lot of damage. And now over here to the side, actually, though, a bigger battle going on. Paparazzi blows up Queen Tekka and Matthew. A big price to pay for the kill of Super. And Benjaz just trying to run away. The roll forward. Do they find the stun, the catch, the anything? They will get it. Benjaz going to drop as well. 
Nice pick off. I don't. I guess they had that shrine ward and were able to catch both. Oh, there's a gem there. Hello, paparazzi. There's a gem. Oh no. Yeah, it's right on top up. of the shaker illusion. In July. That's not a meme player. <laughs> they actually. They're not gonna realize this. Infamous know it's there. Yeah, but this chicken might die if Sakata sees it. Yeah. I think that thing's gonna sit there for a while. Because they don't, like right now, Dyer don't have vision of this area. So yeah, they're not, they're going to be able to go and pick up the gem themselves. All right. Expert mission, Matthew. Going in for the smoke. Stealing the gem. Totally worth it. Mission impossible. Got it. And he'll actually spout it, scout out a ward on the way back as well. Yeah, don't get that. He's getting it. He wants the gold. Is he going to get punished for that? Okay, dog fights him okay. Micro your illusions. Having the select all other units bound is very good. It always feels like it's a little bit weird with uh, PL2 because there's certain settings that you can set so that whenever a uh, illusion gets created, you automatically control it. Yeah, I, I that unit that thing's hard yeah. to use properly. It's because like I don't know, it's just it's just not that great. Because sometimes, like when you want to push out lanes, like oftentimes you, you like select units that you don't actually want to select. But that hero, you need a lot of hockey for. You need one for like everything else. You need one for your like DP PL illusion from the doppelganger. Yeah. You want one from your other one from doppelganger. I'm really glad that they have it in Dota where you can actually like select it and it's it stays throughout your multiple games with the same hero. It would be so annoying if you had to make it every time new. Yeah. Well, if Dota 1 ever were to be remastered, I do hope that they mix out that. Okay, so let's try and get a little bit of context where we're standing in this game. It felt like it was pretty good for Infamous early on. Uh, there were points where it felt like Paparazzi was going to get crazy farmed, but now it's sort of slowed down a little bit, and it's relatively even. Uh, what are both teams sort of looking to accomplish over the next few minutes of this game? Same thing. Win team fights, take Roche, try and edge your lead out a little bit more. No team has like a really huge edge. I also think that the Sven PL matchup is usually Sven favored, but PL's farmed enough to the point where he can kind of overcome that natural disadvantage. Uh, and because of that, I don't think either of them game is taking super late. Paparazzi is like, my PKP is getting low, PL's more farmed than me, and then Infamous is like, well, the Sven's super big. Tight game. Also, the Talisman Invasion could be a big difference too. Being able to mitigate like even one cleave crit because of that could be game winning. So he's up on the high ground here. And IGV not aware. They do spot out Queen Tekka. It's a hard hero to go on right at the beginning, particularly with nobody else around, but they might feel confident. Of course, we do have Excel in the area who could blink in and go for a save with the cold embrace. Infamous, no vision over here on the high ground. And they are slowly taking down Roshan with the Necro. Slow being the operative word. But I mean, he doesn't take much damage either. He's got Pipe and Crimson Guard. If only Heartstopper worked. All right, jump forward. Paparazzi testing the waters. It really does feel like neither team wants to be the first one to initiate. Saving the illusions for PL. Definitely the ideal one to take side lanes. And now they'll start on roof. They can even use one of the illusions to scout up the high ground. Let's see what they're going for. So they are actually not going to contest it yet. They do know that they take it down very slowly, but Paparazzi is not over there. This Observer Ward should have scouted them going inside Roche, but are they really going to give it up for free? It seems unlikely. I mean, you do have a lot of opportunities to open this up. They do scout out the ward now and able to get the D ward up on the high ground. And this still in the pit. They are heading over, and the PL Illusion will scout them out. But yeah, IGB not really looking like they want to contest, and Roche is dead now. Okay. Well, I wish I could see their facial expression right now. I need the player cams because I think they saw them roast, but did they think their team fight was as far inferior? I don't 
think so. I think fighting at the Roshan Pit is almost ideal for them. I guess the PL illusions caused them a lot of issues coming up in the side lanes. Scouting them out, they probably didn't have another smoke to go for, and that made them hesitate greatly going yeah. through the fight. I guess the other factor is that, like, in these fights, it's become so chaotic, and really, IG can't afford to have that happen. Like, it feels as if they need to take very clearly defined team fights where. You know, you get everybody with the vacuum. They're coming for this objective in particular. And if they don't hit all of their spells, things do kind of fall apart for IGV. And they might just lose. Yeah. Would you rather take a fight at Rosta or defend high ground against Aegis? Yeah. It's a tough call. No, they're just going to be sitting up high ground. Well, it's something that they were used to after yesterday. Uh, this is their home and their diary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I was, I was looking back at that game. I think that they were mega creeps for uh, for the other team, for Empire, more than there were regular creeps. <laughs> <laughs> but Infamous, how do they siege the high ground? Clearly, you want to go through bottom. There's less shrines there to have to work with. Uh, Maybe there's some thought to being able to go through mid, but oh, they caught super. That's that's really not good. He doesn't have buyback either. 47 seconds. And are they really gonna run out right now? They jump forward. Quinteca is fine for the moment. The cold embrace turnaround. Paparazzi is gonna cleave his buddy dog fights to death. And now the Reaper sight bringing Paparazzi to half HP. And Quinteca just gonna get cold embraced. They throw out Laguna Blade. It doesn't do nearly enough. Quinteca is alive. IGV is not. They end up having to deny their Lina at the end of the day, and that was clearly not the fight that they wanted to take, but it didn't work out. Necrophos is way too fat. Look at all those defensive items. That Laguna did, like, nothing to him. Yeah, now the buyback. I'll have Jakiro up again, but already the Tier 3 tower is about to fall down. Oh, it hurts, and a vacuum into not a whole heck of a lot. The tower down. They throw out an ice path. July. Keep on cooldown for another 24 seconds. As the melee barracks is going to fall and Infamous not feeling bad at all. And it, this is the thing, like, why why not take that push me? Yeah. Why? Why? I, 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 I. Overall, the game doesn't mean too much for the game. Not like just to get a little bit of TI on this game. It's merely for placement within the lower bracket, but they are getting clobbered. Using all their buildings. And infamous. This game, not terribly relevant for them. Four and five wins, all the same. But a nice morale boost and a nice. Hey, you guys don't know how to play against PL. Now. Be an avenue for other teams to see a way to deal with it. Tomato takes down Super with just his illusions. Didn't even need anything. Magnetizes out, but so too is the BKB and Sakata trying to kill off the Necro. It's not going to happen. He is going to live through that one. Benja is not quite able to get the kill, but Estelle is actually going to die to Paparazzi on the north side of the fight. He pops his invis as well to just try and escape for the moment. The shadow bladed uh, Sven, but it's not quite there either as he is going to start to fall. Then you get the storm hammer and the roll away from dogfights is going to keep him alive. But infamous, they're getting what they came for and it is going to be mega creeps. Just a couple vacuum stun onto two. Light strike array as well. Matthew trying to be that combo breaker. Paparazzi dealing a lot of damage. Still not killing off Queen Tekka, who is somehow alive and pops the wand, but it was not enough. They finally kill him off. Unfortunately, their base is gone. Man, PL was played really well by Tomato this game. He, like, never came in when he thought he was going to die. And sometimes it's a bad thing because you need a tank for your team, but this game he just kind of let the Razor and the Necrophotes draw the majority of the fire. I also think the supports of the team played way better than they did last game. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this? They're mass pinging each other. Matthew just stole Tomato's uh, rune and then also like fissure blocked him. <laughs> oh, it was a regen rune too. He actually needed the regen rune. <laughs> oh, that's a great moment. Oh, man. Is he going to steal the haste too? Of course he is. Oh, no. Okay. That's a good kick. Haste and DB. Look at it. See? How did he go through that? 
These keep on fissure blocking each other. Well, I guess it's Matthew fissure blocking Tomato. They're feeling good. They got the birth to TI in the main event. I don't know, Ben. Do you want to talk a little bit at all about the sort of South American scene and getting into the main event at TI? It's a, a oh, first. I think those guys are really good. Yeah. I, if they had servers of their own, they would have been there, I think, a while ago. Yeah. Uh, but they have to play to, like, U.S. servers, which is, like, and you can tell they're good because they're in the NA high-level clubs all the time, and they still destroy people. There's not much more to say than that. Pretty cool for the region, definitely. Fissure is going to connect there onto two. The Echo Slam comes out, and they will be able to take down that Super Jakiro. And in the meantime, Sven going to be controlled, and Ben Jazz taking all of his damage. Shadow Blade it might not be enough to keep him alive, although he's going to juke back, go for the Okie Doke, be able to get away. That's going to be super dead, and so too will be Paparazzi Sven. Buys back immediately. Dog fights. Trying to get out of here as well, but Sakata with the double kill actually able to make it happen down here. But the south, Cell is going to be brought down, and that's no buyback for the winner Wyvern. Probably too fast and loose in this one, but it's going to be rooted, going to be caught. A big stun comes through onto all of them. Oh, Paparazzi was right there, it might have been enough, but the Magnetite is still doing a lot. Looks like Queen Tekka should be able to run them down. With a little bit of help from Ben Jazz. In July, trying to run, but rooted in the right clicks to maybe finish. Slumber Cape keeps him alive. But Tomato, eyes on the prize, focusing the tier four. Paparazzi thinking about popping his ulti. A hell of a lot of damage. The Ancient is being assaulted with Mega Creeps and all. And in July, vacuum wall, not enough because the Fissure came out. The BKB finally there, but they don't have near enough damage. Ben Jazz finds the kill, and GG is called. Excellent kiting of Sven in this game. This game was a pretty good display of uh, Winter Wyvern's strengths. Like, he just... I can't tell you, I'm supposed to have this explosive team fight, but just one hero was able to ruin most of their gameplay here. Congratulations to Infamous for making it into the main event, and they will end up at 8th seed of Group A at 5 and 11. We'll have to see who it is that they face. Of course, those best of ones so scary, and I think... Probably out of this group, maybe only Secret is the other one in the lower bracket that you would really not want to face off against just because you don't know what's going to happen with Infamous and what they run. Um, anyways, we'll have to see what ends up happening, but our second series of the day, one that only matters for seeding yet again, is going to be Cloud9 versus Hellraisers. Hellraisers are already knocked out, but Cloud9 have a chance to move up and pass Execration, at least in terms of their seeding, uh, as well as Digital Chaos, depending upon what happens in those results as well. But we'll be back in just a little bit. Lyrical Merlini, more from the group stages from TM7.